Hey, and thanks for joining me on this quick review of the blog and newsletter planner Notion template. When you duplicate the template, you'll find this page, which is composed of two different sections. On the left, you have all the different pages and databases, and on the right, you have your planner database. Let's start with the planner database on the right. Here, you can see that you have different status, backlog, draft, written, scheduled, and completed. Using these status, you can track the progress of each of your blog posts or newsletters. You will also find two different database templates, one for blog posts, one for newsletters. You can customize both to your needs. If we have a look at the blog post template, you'll find the layout for any blog post with a table of content and multiple sections. And on the right, a checklist for things that you need to do each time you write, publish, or market a new blog post. For each database item, you'll find different properties. First, you can input the author. If you work as a team, this is very useful to track who wrote which pieces. Then, the type of content, if it's a blog post or newsletter. You see a add more types if needed. Publishing date, which will be used as a reference for the calendar view. Cover image, which will be used for the gallery view. Research, which is a relation property to the research database. So it lets you link any type of research you made for this piece. URL, you can input the link to your content once it's published. Last edit, which is automatically added using a database automation. Status, to track your content progress. Finally, you can also link any social media posts and sponsors that relate to this piece of content. In addition, there are different views available. Currently, we are in the backlog view, which allows you to track the progress of different pieces. There is also a calendar view where you can see scheduled and upcoming pieces. Furthermore, you can view all your published pieces here. Lastly, there is a view that is sorted from newest to oldest based on the publishing date. Okay, now let's move to the left section. First, we have the Brainstorm Hub. Here, you will find five different pages. The first one is the research page. This is where you can take notes, search for specific topics, add tags, and the last edited time is automatically added. You can also link it, as we've seen before, to any blog or newsletter. So, simply use this page and write inside it to add some notes. Next, we have tags. These tags are linked to various databases, including research, inspiration, keywords and tools and resources. For each tag, you can view all the linked items from the different databases. For example, if you click on goats here, you will see that we have displayed the related properties as page sections. This makes it convenient to search for specific items and access all the relevant information about them. Next, we have keywords. You can access different definitions by clicking on the links provided, and acronyms are listed here. Essentially, you can import all your keywords and their related data, such as volume, keyword difficulty, clicks, cost per click, return rate, and priority. Additionally, you can add tags to further categorize them. This database will help you determine which keywords to use in your blog posts or newsletters to optimize SEO. Furthermore, there is a view sorted by priority, allowing you to easily locate the highest priority keywords at the top of the database. Then, you have the Inspiration database, where you can reference similar content that you enjoy and want to gain more insight from. This section consists of a simple database with fields for name, link, and topics. Additionally, you can group the entries by topic for easier navigation. The last section in the Brainstorm Hub is dedicated to tools and resources. Here, you can store all the tools and resources you use on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. You can include the type and a link for each entry. You can also add notes such as email and password details or how you are using the tool. 
You can add tags to categorize the entries, and there is a separate view that groups the tools and resources by type. Now, let's go to the Marketing Hub. We're going to start with the Social Media Tracker. You can use this database to store all your social media posts and track the number of impressions, favorites slash likes, comments, and shares. This can be done automatically using an automation app like Make or Zapier, or you can do it manually. The engagement score is automatically calculated based on this data. You can also view your posts across various platforms such as TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Additionally, you have a calendar to view all your scheduled or past posts. Next, you have SEO and SEM guidelines. These guidelines are personal to you. This document has been auto-generated by Notion AI, so feel free to add your own guidelines. You can use checkboxes to track the progress for any new pieces you publish. The same applies to SEM guidelines. And finally, we have sponsored content. This database contains information about all your sponsors for your newsletters or blog posts. Simply add the product or service, the company responsible, the payment amount for a segment in either your newsletter or blog post, and the status of the sponsor. Additionally, you can link any blog or newsletter to the sponsor for easy tracking. You also have a view per status to track the progress of each sponsor. And that concludes the quick review of the blog and newsletter planner notion template. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. And in the meantime, have an awesome Notion Day!